so I'm going to talk a little bit about how Atlas has been trying their best Try, trying to deal with the tokens. And uh, I just, I would just like to say that this was done from European Atlas's point of view under duress, kind of. I mean, they were less than happy about having to do this. <laughs> I, I understand there was a long, a long lead time warning and everything, but they were still unhappy. Um, uh, so let me just describe the current situation in Atlas. We have 3.6 test queues running successfully at three of the sites, Great Lakes, Brookhaven, and Midwest Tier 2. Um, uh, and uh, we, by we, I mean Doug and Shin, have uh, confirmed that all jobs sent by Harvester have tokens. The current version of OSG has no showstoppers. Uh, so, and Brian tells us that we're, we're that it's ready and why, and, and then is asking me, why haven't we moved? <laughs> um, the, I would say that on average, uh, Great Lakes, Brookhaven and Midwest tier two are ready to deploy 3.6. And they, sh and I think we can, they, those sites can definitely meet them May first deadline without four without. Atlas jobs, Fred. It's important to differentiate. Yeah, right. If you're from Bell, we won't uh, we won't be supporting you. Uh, that's the latest panic is that Bell two is not supported, not supporting tokens. But uh, yesterday we received uh, the welcome, and I left off the word news. The welcome news from Martin Litmass and Peter Vakatesh uh, that the token infrastructure is running stably and that support level is sufficient with the caveat that you have to have 96 hour tokens so they don't have to fix it on the weekend necessarily. And I think this is okay because our current VOMS proxy lifetime is also 96 hours. I mean, I, I, I think we're gonna survive that for the short term. I guess for security purposes, you're going to want to shorten the token lifetime, but um, but for now we're going to start out basically in the same the same way as we had for X.509 certificates. Um, now going forward, uh, as as we all know, after a certain amount of negotiation, OSG 3.5 is scheduled to reach the end of life on May 1. Uh, and that was a slip, if you want to call it a slip, from February 28th, was in, which proved to be impractical. I would say all parties, L LCG, uh, um, OSG, and Atlas, I can't speak for CMS, we're not, uh, we're not quite ready at that date. <laughs> um, uh, so we're going to probably start transitioning next week. Um, this basically means just the C for this, you just need to do the CE. Um, now there are some sites that are not ready to deploy, but uh, to a couple sites, but the sites that are ready to deploy, of course, have, they haven't been standing around waiting for this to be available. They've been working on other stuff, so it may take them time to switch their focus back on uh, on kind of going to OSG 3.6. Though I believe Wen Jing is ready to go. She's been act, asking me a lot, when can she go? And I think the answer is now, except for not on a Friday. Uh, uh, we ha we plan to proceed cautiously with the expectation that there will be additional bumps in the road. I don't see how there couldn't be. Um, and I would like to emphasize here that I believe Atlas and CMS have similar needs from the LCG token infrastructure and the OSG token software stack. stack. Uh, we probably should be touching base and work together with LCG and OSG to get what is needed. I, I think this is very similar to the X.509 certificates where the Atlas and CMS uh, uh, needs were pretty, per, pretty closely aligned. Um, 
We just can't talk about the next that the heavy heavy Higgs boson that we found it. Oh, oh, I won't I won't say the number. Um, and then I want to have one last comment. This is aimed mostly at Brian to pass up the food chain in um, uh, in Wisconsin. I guess well, actually both Brian's. Uh, HT condor is widely used in the Atlas and as a queuing system. And while US Atlas, well, for you at dropping you for US Atlas dropping X.509 support is likely okay. Uh, updating to X.509 HT condor versions during data taking currently in November makes people pretty nervous. Um, uh, you know, because of a site that actually uses HT Condor for queuing is probably updating every compute server. And so the rolling back if something goes wrong would be hard. Uh, uh, and I cannot, I can absolutely say this is not an official desire. I haven't talked to any layers of management at Atlas, only to people that are doing the work. And at that level, they would like to see this that possible the transition to um, Condor 10 without X.509 after the Christmas break uh, when the beam is off. And um, I, about a hundred Atlas queues. Now I'm not talking US Atlas. This is like uh, I use HT Condor. And of course the Non-US sites don't use the OSG stack. So this update will be the first time they are completely dependent on X.509 as a fallback. Um, uh, this is just me thinking aloud. I have no official uh, empowerment to make this request or anything, but I just would like to put it out there. Okay, I'll shut up now. And before I see that we actually had some 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 hands raised, and uh, I feel like this is something that we're going to uh, discuss a lot. So maybe uh, I just I just jump in quickly for from the CMS side and say that we 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 broadly agree with uh, with, with what Fred presented here. Um, you know the CE situation. Uh, we have uh, Gigas tickets open for sites that aren't currently accepting tokens to you know get 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 that sorted out, and then obviously once tokens. Are being sent by the uh, factories down to us, then then we can move the CE uh, to OSG uh, three six. Um, the you know the next hurdle though is uh, if we upgrade the the data transfer nodes to three six, uh, we can't really do that until the whole world is done um, migrating off grid FTP. Um, so uh, that's that's sort of the, the blocker for that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, Atlas is trying very hard to get off of grid FTP, but we're not there yet, that's for sure. Right. Um, so I did see uh, a couple of hands raised, so maybe we start with uh, uh, David Sanders. Well, it's uh, at least the third time I think I brought this up. Well, what does Bell 2 do? I mean, I, I've got Bell 2 coming to my site. BNL, I presume, is also having Bell 2 jobs coming to their site. I've been in contact with Harrison at KAK, but they're working on it, but what do we do in the interim? I know uh, what I'm gonna do is not switch over to 3.6. I just can't. Hey, David, if I, if I can address that one. It, it, it'd be really nice if somebody from Bell2 would, would, would uh, discuss this with OSG. Um, we, we haven't been able to get any contact or or plans. I mean, for, for example, I know the Rock is planning a, a major upgrade uh, to to support tokens, uh, which is way, way, way more than what they need to support OSG three six. Uh, you know, their their major upgrade is kind of what I think WLCG hopes to accomplish in you know twenty twenty four. So I, I really worry that they're trying to do the entire token transition when all they need to do is the OSG 3.6 pieces. Um, but we've we've not been uh, having much luck getting anybody to engage right. um, the process. Uh, it, what I, I don't know what I would do exactly because we're not, you know, as Mid Midwest or to my site, we're not obligated to, su to support 
Bell II like uh, some of the tier one sites are. But I, my thought would be to set up a separate gatekeeper for them or something. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else you can do. We've you know? got eight plus gatekeepers at Brookhaven, so we will. You know, the Atlas ones that are predominantly for Atlas, we can go, but we can't for the other VOs yeah. that aren't ready. Yeah, I mean, that's, which actually puts us into a security. That's because, yeah, because, yeah, I'm sure at a DOE lab, the idea of using unsupported software is a no go, right? I bet if you ask your campus IT people, they would tell you the same answer. Oh, no, that's right. And I, I, uh, it, it's just easier for me to fly underneath the radar, but my intention is to be, compl be compliant with supported software <laughs> because I can do that. Um, yes. So I would definitely recommend not staying on OSG 35 no matter what after May 1. Uh, even if you still need to support GSI proxies from pilots, um, so what you can do is install the supported OSG 3.6 CEs and all the nice OSG software. And Fred, actually, if you could go back a slide. I can uh, go back a slide. That, uh, the, I think it was your last one, sorry. Um, this one? But, but basically, uh, the one about Europe and Condor timelines and- Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the Condor team schedule is longer for GSI support. So you could always get the RPM packages from the Condor repositories to hold you over for between May 1 and whenever they end of life. And now that only buys you a couple of months, but that buys us a couple of months of talking to these other collaborations that, that haven't sorted out the token submission yet do we have documentation where it's spelled out you know take these packages from here these from there i think uh, before you would want as a tier one before a tier one, one would want to do that you want an official statement from osg that that is a supported path it is a support path and has been for a long time where uh, fermilab runs like this Pretty much exclusively they get condor the condor binaries directly from the chtc yum repositories and then install the osg packages on top of it of that okay yeah so i we could probably spell it out a bit more in our documentation but we, we do have have that um somewhat documented the uh, you know um, the thing is you know from my point of view i'm trying to cope sites that are Several sites that I'm dealing with are not so gung ho about OSG 3.6, and I would, in fact, they're not even. Some of them are not even gung ho about OSG 3.5. So, um, uh, so I'm hoping to use this kind of, to not give them too many outs in this situation, if you know what I mean. But I'm not a tier one, so I don't have to support everybody who can walk through the door. Yeah. You know? Uh, I see that uh, Todd Tannenbaum has his hand raised. Hi. So, uh, I, I thank you very much for the for the slides and the and the talk, Fred. But uh, I heard something about uh, delaying HT Condor Ten, which will have you know is planned to not have uh, Globus GSI support until uh, December of 2022. Um, it was November last week. Uh, so and September the month before. Yeah. So so maybe just to clarify, I I think we're talking about extending support for HT Condor Nine. Uh, HT yeah. Condor Nine has Globus and GSI and all that in it. And I with, think you would have people breathing, resume breathing at various places if you would do that. <laughs> we have very have people doing what? I said I would. You would have people various people. People at various sites resume breathing if you yeah. would do that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so HT Condor Nine, uh, the the you know the timeline we we had. I guess I can put it in the in, in the chat here. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, clearly we're talking about nine dot zero dot 
X, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, so that has, you know, Globus and, and GSI, and that was slated to, uh, you know, end support at, you know, six months after 10 comes out, which is expected to, you know, so that places it in November. But I, it is not a big ask in my mind to extend that, you know, a couple of months to the, to the end of December or, you know, middle of January or something like that. I think you want to allow sites uh, a t time for people to come back from the holidays and do this afterwards. Uh, I think the, uh, you know, I mean, I re realize that the uh, data taking for Proton stops relatively early, but I think Andrew can jump in here and tell us how important heavy ion running is. <laughs> okay, so 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 basically, you're you're saying extend support for HT Condor nine point zero point X to uh, uh, the end of January, start of start of February, something like that. That yeah. would I think that would relieve a lot of pressure, and you would be likely. In the long run, you might actually get more people converting that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't think this is a big ask. I think that's that's very, that's so, very doable. So would it be good for WLCG to talk with you guys at the Condor team, Todd? Because the actual timing, there may be uh, European colleagues who are, aren't really represented here. That yeah. may have a slightly different timeline than what Fred is proposing. Yeah, I, I just proposed the earliest practical thing I could think of. And, the, and I want to make it clear, I have absolutely no official license to propose that. You know, it's just my, me looking at the, looking at the, uh, the, the, the lay of the land, you know. Yeah. So I, I was going to mention, I, I, I believe David Cameron already requested this, and uh, I, I believe Todd already said yes to. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I already well, said yes to uh, end of December. So, so yeah. I'm, I, I guess I'm also saying yes now to, you know, we'll, yeah. you know, we'll say February, uh, you know, we can do that. I, yeah, I do like I, the idea of maybe adding a note to like a, a GDB uh, uh, call or something like that, just just so it, it kind of pops out of email and into the written record, so to say. Yeah, I mean, well, and you can, uh, and I noticed that the uh, the Condor Twiki that gives the schedule is highly fungible. So um, <laughs> you can move the date there too, I suppose. Yep, yep. <laughs> sure can. Um, it, it, seems to, it seems to be like the Fermilab schedule. It's always a month from now no matter what month it is, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, from, from my perspective, you know, being responsible for a, a bunch of software that has security libraries that aren't supported anymore make, makes me nervous. But, I, you know, I don't see a big difference between November and, you know, February. Uh, so yeah. in, in the big yeah. scheme of things. So especially I mean, I if think, it helps out people that I, I, I can certainly do that. I think we just need, well, and, and I'm quite willing to crack the whip you know, to get people to go, you know, and say that, you know, February 1 is like a drop, a true drop dead date, not, you know, we're not going to postpone forever, right, you know. Right, right. Okay, it, great. I'll, I'll change this, uh, this wiki and, and I can send the email to whoever uh, to get yeah, a written yeah. record. So send it to, who, yeah, I'd send it to a lot of people. <laughs> okay. Excellent. You guys are very successful and everybody's using you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's because of because of the community like this. So. <laughs> oh, yes. Or as you call them, the pains in the butt. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, now. We're, we're all just here to enable. Them, so. Okay. Uh, uh, are there other hands up? I'm not, I should stop sharing so I can see who, which hands are up. Yeah, I think that Dave Mason was the uh, next, next hand. Yeah. Mason, do I do I have a hand up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, not on purpose. Okay, okay. It must be left over from a previous talk. Yeah, I'll go put it. Figure out how to put it down. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, um. Well, you just raise it back again. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Me either. Okay. Uh, there was a couple of questions in the chat. Um, I'm trying to get back, get back to where we were.
Although it looks like maybe they were answered here. Uh, we have Dave, a, Dave were they? I mean, the one question I have for as a multi-VO site that takes work from others is, is see, are the factories cut over so that they're mostly sending uh, tokens? Whether they be uh, tokens from Fermilab for Dune or tokens uh, for C US CMS jobs. Because the last time I looked at Brookhaven, and that's how I found out how much Atlas was sending and not, non-Atlas was still at least 50-50, token to, G to X509. Uh, so so I guess I, I, I've been doing that spreadsheet lately. Uh, I've got monitoring for most of the, you know, I, I think it's about uh, however many M is, uh, you know, 16 columns by about 200 rows of Condor CEs I've been able to suss out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's higher than 50%. Uh, there are some, quite a few that came on e even this week. Um, and we're trying to chase down the last couple that aren't, you know, that are kind of at 0%. Uh, so it's, it's definitely one that's been rapidly changing even during the month of March. I think Dave has his hand up and I, I looking at the comments, I can imagine what about, go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Okay. I just started. Yeah, using you headset. sound fine. Okay. Um, so it's a very common confusion that people have <clears throat> when they think, Oh, HD Condor isn't supporting X509 anymore that they worry about the user jobs because, but that's not the, the part that's changing here. Where you know, it's changing is the, the client, the server side, right? So it's the server side that's changing. So we care about the SCED D, which is basically the pilot job submission. Now, there's also in CMS at least using Gliden WS as a SCED D in the pool, the global pool that's a Gladian WMS installation of HD Condor and they can continue to, they're gonna to continue to use the GSA library out of, I presume you know, from source code and stuff from the, from the grid community toolkit. So it's still, we're still talking a couple of years probably before LHCVOs haven't really started to plan that transition yet, as far as I can see. Um, Fermilab, we have made a plan, we've started, you know, doing, implementing parts of it, but it's still going to be a while before we're transitioned in that, at that level too. So it's, this, this, you know, the immediate deadline is really only affecting pilot jobs. Do you agree with that, Brian? Am I, did I say that right? Yeah, I mean, the, the way I think uh, Alessandro put it once, you know, that uh, the token transition is a HLHC project, right? Uh, that it's it's going to take through run three and finish up the next long shutdown, likely for uh, LHC. Uh, so you, you want to make sure you don't confuse the totality of the token transition with uh, the switch to OSG three six. Doug, I see your hand up. Yeah, uh, if this is about token transition, not 3.6. Well, even with 3.6, the question, in storage realm, I know for a while for Atlas, we will continue to use X509, but is there any, uh, you know, that seems to be a different timeline. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, significantly longer. Yeah, um, this is a major development item for Ruscio this year. Uh, my my personal goal is it's kind of at the uh, you know C C one file transferred from a you know Ruscio with their vision of um, how how the tokens work uh, during 2022. So uh, yeah, this is you know if you kind of think of where uh, how the HTTP TPC stuff happened, where you know going from zero percent to one percent took a number, you know, probably the same amount of time it took to go from 1% to 100 or 99.9%. Uh, we're, we're still kind of in that zero to 1% on uh, how Ruscio and FTS use tokens. And as, as you can imagine, you know, again, we're, we're at the, the beginning of run three. Uh, that's something that's going to complete 
likely to influence the lung shutdown. It a little hard to predict, of course, with uh, some of the dates <laughs> of when the lung shutdown is uh, shifting a bit, uh, but yeah, it's it's a much longer time scale, and, and there's still some design slash early prototyping things happening on the data side. I think there was a timeline that said X five one nine optional in twenty twenty five, right? Yeah, and, and again, I I don't know if that's been updated since the the latest revisions to the LHC run schedule. Probably not, but but you know that's. That, you know, it, it's not uh, months, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's still years. It's, it's Brian, still years. just from my, out of curiosity, who's providing the support for X.509 certificate usage in that period, if it's not Clovis, I mean? Uh, we're heavily leveraging uh, the implementation in XRD. Uh, uh, XRD has its own yeah. independent, unique implementation. Um, and uh, Decash, uh, I, I forget the name of the library uh, in Decash. Will the, will the CA and CRL infrastructure still work in 3.6 and get all that stuff updated? Yeah, yeah. It, of course, that, that stuff is not really related to the ability to do, uh, uh, you know, Globus Toolkit type things. So CAs, um, you, you still need host certs, right? You, even with tokens, the the is token kind of right? toolkit still in OSG three six. But uh, so, sorry, Tim, I didn't. Are, are there good proxy init and bums proxy init still in OSG three six? I believe the bums proxy init uh, can be pulled in. Okay. Good proxy init's in Apple, so you can get it from yeah. them. Yeah. So so you can still. Talk to bomb servers, for, for example. Um, bomb, bombs proxy net. Yeah, that, that's another good point. Is is one? It, it's that's completely independent of uh, any toolkits. Um, so, so Andrew, looking at the at your your question in the the chat, uh, it, it turns out. Delegation and schlepping proxies from point A to point B is a lot easier than the, the full blown security handshake of GPTSI. So, so, for example, the way we or Condor moves around proxies is now done in pure OpenSSL because it's a very small bit of code to do that versus all, all the rules of GSI authentication. Right, but what about the gliding, <coughs> excuse me, the gliding WMS? SCEDD, that's HD Condor, right? And they're going to still need to accept and authenticate everything. So isn't that going to be a problem if they don't have support in the, the latest HD Condor? Uh, what, what do you mean by the Gliden WS SCEDD? Sorry. I mean, it's going to have to continue to accept X509 authentication, right, from the users? You know, on the server side, right? SCEDD. Hi. You mean like the where where users submit their jobs? Yeah. Yeah. No, no I, I I think in all the cases people are replacing it with with tokens of some sort or um, let's see, certain uses Kerberos for users. Um, okay, so the, so the submission to the to the to the pool itself is not using X509, but then the, the, those those still get passed on to the job. The X509 is right. It, 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 exactly. So talking from the the client tool. To the, to the submit host uh, is independent of the ability to move a proxy or, or delegate a proxy from the client side to the submit host. 